different ways that you can use Lekka or Lekka clay pebbles and so basically just gonna get into three different ways or three different reasons why I have used Lekka pebbles for plants. Um, yeah I guess I just want to start by saying that at first I was really hesitant to try like a pebbles because I just kind of didn't really understand why you would use them when you could just use regular soil and it just seemed like like why go on this whole new like purchasing extreme <laughs> for buying a new soil medium and especially when there's so many other things like soil and sphagnum and some other things coming out like pond and um, perlite, people using all types of different soil mediums. But today I'm going to get into the reasons why Lucky has actually helped me and saved some of my plants. So yeah, like I said, I was really nervous at first when I tried to use Lucky pebbles because I don't know, there was just a lot of fear and I was like, am I going to do it right? And I like watched some YouTube videos about how to do it and I think because it's such a new medium or at least like new into like the plant community, there isn't a ton of information and there isn't a ton of information that says like the same thing or like gives you information that is like known to be true about it. So I think it's sort of like more or less like use at your own risk. Thing to do when it comes to plants but I follow so many amazing plant creators on the internet that have made me feel more confident about it and definitely pointed me towards resources and like ways of, of using it that made me feel better about it so yeah I think that at first I was really nervous and I checked the roots like incessantly <laughs> to make sure that I was doing it right but I think when it comes to Lekka it takes a lot of patience and so I think it's okay to be nervous at first but you just have to be patient so the first reason and the like number one way or the number one reason why I started using Wicca was to prevent pests and I think especially in the summertime when you have to water your plants like quite frequently it's really easy to just get a fungus gnat infestation in your house so I think I sort of got really frustrated at a certain point with the amount of fungus gnats in my house and that means like you know I think it's really easy to like overwater in the summertime because it's so hot and your plants are thirsty and the fungus gnats will just start like breeding in your freaking soil so I think that was one of the reasons why I wanted to try it because I was having such a bad fungus gnat infestation and I think I've become increasingly paranoid over the past year about like soil mites and different pests living in my soil. Um, and so, yeah, I think the number one reason to try Lekka is to navigate different pest issues. And so, I, the first plant that I used Lekka with, which was a huge risk for me, was this um, ruby ficus tree. And so, this is entirely, it's full of Lekka, and I will do a little zoom action so you can see, but this is full of Lekka, and let's see, focus. Yeah, basically, this was a huge risk for me um, because ficus trees can be super 
super duper like um, finicky when it comes to changing their conditions like especially ficus trees like fiddle leaf and rubber trees can also be like super finicky when it comes to changing their conditions and so this was a huge risk for me but it definitely paid off and I really didn't expect it to because this tree was kind of yes I really need to dust it it has a lot of cat hair on it um, this tree wasn't putting out any new growth for like probably about three or four months and then one month into me using Leca with this plant it put out a new leaf and I'm so so happy about it that's the new leaf um, yeah this tree is really really beautiful despite it being a slow grower I love this plant um, and so yeah this was also a risk in terms of like the pot that I am using for it because I think when it comes to LECA, I think seeing the water level and being able to make sure that the roots are just above the water level is really, really important. And also like being able to see when you need to refill the water, replenish the water um, is super important. And so this was a big risk for me, but it definitely paid off. Um, and yeah, I think like, Something else that I've learned by watching other videos and from my own experience is to make sure that you're, when you're using Leca, that you don't put it in a jar that has like a lip or like it goes in um, at the top because it can be hard when you need to repot to get it out because of the lip or like the Leca balls will get stuck. Um, but the really cool thing that I noticed with this plant is that it immediately started to like grab hold of all the, the clay pebbles because the ficus isn't a tree that you water super often so it really wants to suck the moisture from the clay pebbles so yeah I think that like in general this method really helped me prevent pests for this plant because there were so many fungus gnats and like mites living in this plant and I didn't repot it when I first got it. I kept it in the soil that it was in for from the um, from the nursery, and so yeah, I definitely don't regret this choice of putting it in Leca, and it's ultimately helped me prevent pests when it comes to this plant. Um, yeah, the only thing I would have done differently in this scenario is to put it in a clear pot so that I can see when to water it. Um, but like, you know, I think ficus, while they can be really pesky and like finicky, I think that once you get on a regular watering schedule, it's pretty easy to maintain. Um, so like I actually made this a lot more easy for me. Um, yeah, so that's the first reason that I think like is really great in preventing pests. And the second reason that I think Leca is really great and slash the other way to use Leca is to grow new roots. And this was an even bigger risk for me um, to try this out as, such, as someone that is really new to this. I basically had these two jade plants that I, my partner bought me from Trader Joe's about a year ago and they were doing generally pretty well but I hadn't repotted them from their original soil and when you buy plants from nurseries sometimes they're not in like the best soil mix for them and so this jade was in like a peat moss blend big yikes um and like it was the soil was compacted it was like not having a good time it wasn't absorbing any water it was just overall bad and so what i tried to do is i tried to take it out of the soil but it was just it was just a really bad situation and i tried to 
like of course when you use leca you want to like rinse all of the soil out of the roots and so once i started to do that the roots started to rot completely <laughs> and with a jade plant also another like super finicky plant that doesn't like to be over watered i was like really scared i was like i for sure have killed this plant like i was like this is a goner and then so Another big risk for me, I chopped off the roots completely. Like, on a jade plant that had been living for like a full year in my care, I chopped off the roots completely and I was like, this is a really huge risk. And I put it in LECA. At first it was having a hard time standing up and I'm so excited because it grew new roots. Like after being completely, like it was like bald on the bottom, like no roots at all and it's growing new roots. And I'm so pleased. I don't know if this is gonna end up going well, but I think sometimes in this situation it really pays off with plants that are drought tolerant especially. Um, because, yeah, sometimes I think soil really suffocates roots in a way that sort of just, it, it's like, really easy to overwater your plant in soil because soil retains so much moisture versus I think Leca pebbles are amazing because the roots can suck the moisture that they need. Um, let me just, oh, look, it's Max. <laughs> so this is the jade that's in Leca and it's kind of crazy because she's growing these like little aerial roots, which is like really weird for a jade, I feel like. Anyways, okay, there we go. And so she's like growing these aerial roots from like the top over here. I'll, I'll put a close up in the video, but I was just like blown away, honestly. I was like, I didn't think this was gonna work. And I felt like she was just gonna die and not be able to get any water. But I was so surprised when I started to see new growth at the top and I started to see like little white roots. And I think the most important thing and what I learned with this is that putting it in a clear pot is really helpful because I can see where the stump or like the end of the plant ends or like to keep in my mind sort of where that is and just to fill the water line right up to like right before that. And so, this was a really great experiment for me and I was like, I didn't even think it was gonna grow new roots, but this really worked out like for me in a situation where I was like, this plant is a goner. And jades are like kind of scary in that way. So this was really surprising to me. So that's the second reason to use Leca is to grow new roots. The third reason sort of goes along with the other two that I mentioned before, and that is to prevent root rot. So basically, I think, like I was talking about a little bit before, it's really easy for plants to get root rot when it comes to soil, especially if it's not the right soil mix. Especially, like, I think I've, I've realized that peat moss, and like moisture dense soils that don't have a lot of good like grit or like drainage um whether that is like things that make it a chunky mix like orchid bark or perlite pumice um soils that don't have any of those things to like sort of mix it in or sorry mixed in can really cause your plant to get root rot and i think Leca, while it does take an adjustment period, is a really good, um, it, it definitely combats that issue pretty well and honestly even better than I expected it to. And so yeah, this is another plant that I really took the risk with Leca for and this is an umbrella tree or a chefflera. And 
This was another big risk for me, but I have it in the nursery pot inside of another one so that I can sort of fill this ceramic pot with water and then just have the plants suck up the water from the ceramic pot, which is also sort of interesting to me because ceramic pots tend to, or terracotta pots tend to like suck the moisture. Um, but really what, what works out in this situ situation is that um, when I water it, the water just goes through to the pot and then the plant is still able to like hold the water in the bottom and the plant can suck up the water that it needs. And so this sort of created like a really low maintenance situation for me because it's winter and I don't need to water plants as much and so this plant can just sort of get what it needs in that way. And so, yeah, this was another sort of root rot situation for me where the roots were really unhappy in soil and nothing was really happening. I wasn't getting any new growth. And then like a month into it being in LECA, it puts out like a bunch of new growth for me. And so this was another success story for me with LECA. The only time I've had a LECA failure was with a Tetrasperma mini monstera that just would not stand upright in the jar that I had it in. And I just really couldn't get it together. Like I really couldn't get this Tetrasperma to be happy. And so I tried to put it in water, I tried to put it in LECA and Ultimately, I just ended up putting it back in soil because I was like too nervous about losing it. And so, yeah, that was my only like a failure, but it wasn't a failure because I didn't kill a plant, um, but it was definitely a learning experience for me. Um, and so, yeah, that's the third reason is to prevent root rot. And yeah, I, I think the last thing that I want to talk about is just some other things that I've generally learned or generally want to talk about when it comes to LECA and that is basically what I've sort of come to understand as good practice for LECA and that is like after like reading articles, watching videos, getting a variety of different um, understandings from different creators and people on the internet about it because like I said it's kind of a new medium or at least new in like the mainstream plant community. And so there was a lot of discussion about how often or how long do you soak LECA for? And some people said like soak it overnight. Some people said soak it for 30 minutes. Some people said soak it for one to three hours. And I think whatever feels good to you works as long as you are able to get the sort of dust particles off of it and as long as it has some time to like absorb moisture to any capacity um and so the first time i used LECA i did soak it overnight but i think the important part of that was that after it's soaked like you'll see a lot of the like clay dust particles in the water and so after you do that you should definitely put it into a like a strainer and just run the water through it to get all of the dust particles off and that worked really well for me um, and so yeah that was like the first question that I had because I, I didn't even realize that you have to soak it at first I thought that you could just use it um, but I think really the most important part is that the pebbles have some time to absorb water because once you have it in your plant jar or pot it's gonna be the only water that it's going to be able to like soak in is the water that you feed the plant with which is like a very minimal amount um, a lot less than you would when you're watering a plant with soil so yeah I think I sort of have a practice of like giving like I'll pour some water into the like I'll sort of rinse out the LECA balls when it's in the like once it's in the pot and it's planted 
maybe once a week, sometimes every other week, just to sort of like allow them some water to soak in. And that's sort of like a different practice than when I actually water the plant to get the roots water. I think having them stay a little bit moist feels has been helpful for me so far. Um, also because like they can get like dusty and kind of like gross like I don't know I just like to keep them a little bit moist and that's so I'll like pour a little bit of water through it but I won't not like when I'm actually feeding the plant and that's another thing that I wanted to think about and talk about is the nutrients that you can use when it comes to Leica because I think I haven't really found a lot of resources I know a lot of people use like a hydroponic fertilizer um, and the only hydroponic fertilizer I really have is Super Thrive, which is my favorite fertilizer. Um, but if you have anything else that's been a helpful nutrient to use with LECA, if you could leave it in the comments, that would be really great because I'm still looking for something that works. I mean, other than me just dropping a couple drops of Super Thrive into water and then watering the plant, that's really all I've been doing. Um, I mean, also because it's winter and I'm not trying to like go crazy with the fertilizer. Um, I'm also not really one to go crazy with the fertilizer. Once I found Super Thrive, I was like, I'm good. Like with my soil plants, I will occasionally use Osmo Coat or I do have a liquid fertilizer for succulents, but I've sort of chilled out on that a little bit. Um, so yeah, I think nutrients is something that I'm really curious about when it comes to LECA and hydroponic fertilizing because I love Super Thrive, but I haven't found anything else that I like as much as that. I have been wanting to try Liquid Dirt and um, Vitamix Pro, but I haven't had the chance to do that yet. So I think, yeah, I'm really curious about what your favorite hydroponic fertilizer is for LECA or just for like plants in general. So yeah, leave that in the comments below. So yeah, that's gonna be all I'm talking about in this video today. Thank you for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe below and blah, 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 um, if you haven't already, subscribe below and follow me on Instagram and have a good day. Bye!